All right, here we go. 6.2, heat of reaction. We're going to start off learn, talking about something that we haven't talked about yet this year when it comes to chemical reactions is that they're reversible. And you, believe it or not, you can actually relate to this. Think about if you have an ice cube, right, and you add heat, what do you get? Right, you get water, liquid. Well, what if we take away heat from liquid water, what do we get? We get an ice cube and then the heat that we took away. So just like melting ice to make water or freezing that water to make ice, chemical reactions can be reversible. And chemists use what's called potential energy diagrams to illustrate the potential or stored energy that occurs during chemical reactions. Okay, And just like we can use uh, our cooling curve diagram to demonstrate this, in the next lesson or two we're going to start to see other types of graphical representations for chemical reactions. We have to remember that a reaction is the breaking and reforming of bonds. And what happens first? We break bonds and then we form bonds. So we have chemical A plus B are going to make C plus D. We break the bonds in A, we break the bonds in B, and then bonds are formed to make C and D. So for example, let's say we have 2H2 plus O2 makes H2O. All right, we have two molecules of hydrogen, one molecule of oxygen, and we're going to make two molecules of water. Well, in order to be able to bond the hydrogens with the oxygen, first we have to break these bonds. To do so, we have to put in energy. Then, the hydrogens are free to bond with the oxygens, and in doing so, they release energy, according to what we've already learned, BARF. Break, absorb, release, form. Okay, now all that energy gets tracked and added up and subtracted, and we end up with what's called the heat of reaction, which is going to be that delta H you see here. The heat of reaction is the amount of heat energy lost or gained through a reaction. So if we add up and subtract all the heat energy from the bonds being broken and formed, whatever's left, that change in energy, is going to be our delta H, our heat of reaction. Fancy chemistry word for it is called enthalpy. The way we do the math for it, it's the potential energy of the products minus the, temp the potential energy of the reactants. Now, reactions that release energy are exothermic, the same way when we did heating and cooling curves, when we talked about endothermic and exothermic. Exothermic reactions, the delta H is negative. All right, to me, when I was first learning this, it kind of seemed backwards, but when we look at the graphs in the next lesson, it'll start to make more sense. When we write out a chemical equation for this, for a negative delta H exothermic, the energy released is shown on the right. And that kind of makes sense because exothermic energy is given off, so it's kind of like the energy is a product, right, because it's given off. So it makes sense that it'll be on the right, on the product side. An example is if you, would add, if you put sodium metal in water, very fast reaction and heat and sometimes fire and given off as a product. Reactions that absorb or gain energy are endothermic. So pretty much everything's the opposite. For an endothermic reaction, the delta H is positive. The energy absorbed is shown on the left, right? It's a reactant because you have to absorb this energy for the reaction to take place. And an example is anytime you're baking something, right? There's a chemical reaction and it's endothermic. You need the oven to supply heat to get the reaction going. All right. 
So to recap, exothermic. Reactions that release energy are exothermic. Delta H is negative. Energy is released, so it's shown on the right of our uh, chemical equation and our example. To recap again, endothermic reactions that absorb or gain energy. The delta H is positive. The energy is shown on the left as if it were a reactant. All right, back to reversible reactions. Reversible reactions are reactions that go in both directions. Okay, so you have your reactants A plus B makes C plus D. Can also go backwards where C plus D can react to make A and B. Whatever you do to a chemical equation, you must also do to the delta H. So that means if we reverse a reaction, right? So let's say A plus B yields C plus D plus some heat. I'm just going to put uh, J for joules, heat. Okay? If we flip and go backwards, we would have to add heat to make the reverse take place. So if the forward reaction gives off heat, the backwards reaction, we have to add heat. And when we... Uh, practice with the heat energy on the reference table, you can see when we reverse a reaction, flip the products and reactants around, you must also flip the sign for delta H. So if the delta H is negative on the forward reaction, that means delta H will be positive on the reverse reaction. Also, if you double the equation or the coefficients, you must double the delta H. Right? So if we say now 2A plus 2B, that would be 2C plus 2D plus double the amount of heat. All right, question time. Okay, so look back over the notes. Go back over the video if you can't answer these because you will get asked these in class. Just one little hint, magnitude is going to be a numeric value. Okay, So if we reverse the reaction, what happens to the magnitude, the number of delta H? And then what happens to the sign? All right, that brings us to the end of 6.2. I will see you guys in school.